You're now watching Boomsies on the Bet Rivers Network. How many times did Total Eclipse of the Heart get played on Monday across the world? Well, across North America, I guess. I bet you a lot. Bet you they made some money on that little jingle. We got clouds. We had clouds. Then it was darkness. Then it wasn't. The darkness was pretty cool. All the lights came on in the backyard. Wish I'd driven to where it was sunny. But then I, well, where do I end up? Where, how long's that drive? We survived the eclipse. Boomsies. 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 Well, welcome to the show. What's up, everybody? As someone pointed out on social media, they said, uh, go to sunglass store. Oh, to go to the beach, you'll need these $250 sunglasses. Solar eclipse glasses makers. Here, you can have these for $4 and you can stare directly at the sun. So, uh. The sunglass makers are pulling a fast one on us. It was a cool experience. Didn't get to see uh, the the full coverage of the sun. But we felt it. We, we did it all together. Which was kind of like a communal experience. And that's why I enjoyed it. I'm Dan O'Toole. This is Boomsies. Make sure you uh, catch me every Monday on the Bet Rivers Players Club YouTube page at 1 Eastern. I play all the best slots. And um, I always send out a link on Twitter just before I, I go live. Because as that stream is and as this podcast is, it's sponsored by Bet Rivers. So it's an online company in which you uh you play slots you can wager on sports and i work for that company so i do things for that company and i i waded into the comments which i don't try to do and when i sent out the link someone responded with wow embarrassing and i'm a grown man And in the days leading up to reading that comment, I watched a great discussion by former co-worker Nick Wright, where he talked about the influence and the negativity of social media, how he stopped looking at comments because he's like, same thing. You get positive comments and then you get that one negative one and people say, oh, just ignore it. Ignore the haters. And he's like, you can't. You physically can't ignore that. So after watching Nick, reading that comment, I decided I'm simply going to post things and I'm never going to look at the comments. So if I don't respond to you, I apologize. But I don't have time for that. If you have an issue with me doing work for the company I work for, then hey, that's, that's not my problem. I'm not on television anymore. So I'm not analyzing a a Blue Jays game. It's like if I worked for Disney and they say, hey, uh, why don't you go ride this uh, this new ride and videotape it? What are you going to say? No. Say no. Of course I'm going to do that. So ignoring the haters is impossible. So rather than having to do that, I'm just not going to look. It's like the eclipse. Although when it was full coverage, you can look at it because the sun is blocked out. I did learn that. We didn't have that opportunity. 
So, yeah, catch us uh, every uh, Monday, 1 Eastern, and also uh, I'm not the only one that streams for the Bet Rivers Players Club. You can catch a stream every weekday at 6 Eastern. Big week here in Canada, in Ontario, in Toronto, as the Toronto Blue Jays had their home opener. They were the last or the second last team to finally play their home opener. I would like one season where they get to play their first game of the year at home. I know they probably needed a bit more runway because they were finishing the renovations to the 100 level. They had to do all that in five months. A lot of work. The broadcast described how many loads of concrete, how many loads of debris they took out. And as I knew that was going to happen, they talked a lot about the renovations, as they should. They own the broadcast. They own the team. Do whatever the hell you want. I'm here for the positives. It looks great. I don't like the fake brick that they put in. I would have gone without that. I would have spaced the uh, the seats behind home plate a bit tighter together. But I'm here for the positives. And Buck Martinez, an integral part of the Blue Jays broadcast, he was there. He was present. And he left us a voicemail to describe his experience in the home opener. Yeah, it was a great night at the ballpark last night for sure as the Blue Jays beat the Seattle Mariners in the home opener. And, of course, all the talk was about the renovations at Rogers Center. I talked to some fans before the game, and everyone was impressed. The ballpark looks great. But if you ask me, the Blue Jays should have done more in the offseason to renovate this roster. To me, it's not good enough. I know it's early, but there's not enough talent, and they don't put together enough quality at bats on a consistent basis. I believe they're going to continue to struggle to score runs all season long. Well, I'll tell you what, boys. If they don't get big years out of Bowen and Vladdy, we may end up seeing a lot of empty seats behind home plate. Buck hit the nail on the head there. And producer Tim, he is adamant that they had seat fillers at the end of the game when the Jays were clearly going to win. And people, I had tuned out at that point. So that is a, a thing that may happen this year. Tim, you are 100% certain this was what occurred? I mean, in the eighth inning, it was like 5-1, I think. And like Getty Lee and half the people in those seats behind home plate left. And all of a sudden, like, they started bringing other people in that clearly hadn't been there the whole game. We were just kind of, like, moving around, trying to figure out which seats they wanted to sit in and stuff. You know, talking to the waiter and waitress, like, for sure they were they were seat fillers. I don't know if they did that in the past, but it was noticeable last night because there was, like, half those seats were empty after the eighth inning. And all of a sudden, these people that hadn't been there the whole game were there. Z Money, can you get us a price check? If we wanted to get one ticket to those seats behind home plate, what are we looking at? Thousand bucks? My buddy JC, he is dead center behind home plate. He has primo seating. Well, home plate lady is to the far right. Tim. I mentioned I want to keep it positive. Give me the negatives on the Blue Jays start to the season. Go. This is your time to shine. Well, I mean, if you watch any of those games, the first 10 games, it was not not pretty. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't it pretty. was not pretty. But they showed a graphic last night, showed uh, heading into the game yesterday. So yesterday's game, they played great. It was a great game. But heading into yesterday, team average, 193, tied for 28th. Runners in scoring position, 197. Uh, they were in 28th, which I would have sworn they were probably last in that category. ERA, 546, 27th. Opposition home runs, 19, 30th. They'd given up more home runs than any other team in the majors. So a bit of a slow start, I think is safe to say. I tuned into that uh, game against the Yankees on Sunday when uh, Giancarlo Stanton came up with the bases loaded. And... I only had to watch the game for two minutes. I was, he obliterated a baseball. 
It hit the facing of the second deck. Baseball destroyed. So it saved me a lot of time having to sit through that. Uh, Z Money, what did you find out for ticket pricing behind home plate at the new Rogers Center? So uh, there is a ticket left for Tuesday night's game. It is two rows behind. It's the second row behind home plate. That ticket will cost you... Uh, come on, where'd you go? $1,121.25. Oh, man. Plus service charge. Plus, yeah, plus the service charge. What? You do get free food, though, right? Uh, it doesn't say that anywhere here. Oh, boy. Like, sure, like, I don't know. That is. I would hope that they would give you, like, at Dodgers. I mean, I, I had the, I was lucky enough once to sit in the president's area in the, at Dodger stadium. And when you walk in, there's basically like just giant canisters of hot dogs, of Dodger dogs and drinks and bottles of water and pretzel or whatever you popcorn, whatever you want. You just take it and walk to your seat. Uh, I will never pay that. I will never pay for a ticket to a sporting event, which I have not done in my adult life. And I can, I want to continue that streak, so I will wait for the phone call from my good friend, JC, to invite me to those seats. Uh, it's the, the season's young. Let's not, let's not get uh, downtrodden about the start of the year. We've still got the hope of Joey Votto, who's hitting off a tee down in Dunedin as he's going to make his way to this, this ball club. So keep the dream alive. That lineup, at times, oy, you're like, where, where are we? Who's gonna get us RBIs? Who's gonna get us home runs? And I actually loved the pregame show before that Jays game, in which Bo Bichette was asked the stat that he considers the most important for a hitter. With all the analytics in this world, he said batting average. Bo Bichette, you're my guy. Thank you. Batting average RBI home runs will forever be the three kings. Don't care what era we're in, those three live on top of the stats pedestal for baseball. And don't come at me. Uh, I have some uh, corrections to get to because um, last week we discussed a potential for a cooking show in which you take stuff out of your fridge and make a possible gourmet meal. This, this was a, a popular topic of conversation because uh, Tina wanted me to know there was a show on CBC similar to the cooking show. The premise was that the cooks would go into a house and buy items from one family's kitchen and fridge and then make a meal. So that show exists. And then Brian said uh, he was listening. He said there used to be a show on Netflix. It was a Korean cooking show called Chef in My Fridge. The show would introduce a couple of celebrities, then physically bring their refrigerators from their homes to the studio. Gourmet chefs would have to cook with whatever was there within 15 minutes, and the guests would vote which meal was best. It was not in English, but he said it was still hilarious. So, who knew? It exists. Uh, I guess I'm late to the, the parade on that. I did uh, go about cooking a meal here on the weekend, on Saturday. I asked my Sydney, I said, what do you want? I always give my kids, if you could eat anything in the world right now, what would it be? I'll cook it for you. Their response nine times out of ten is, I don't care. And if you put I don't care on the table, they will not like that. Because they'll say, I don't want this. But full credit to Sid, she said, that uh, shrimp thing you make. I said, shrimp, shrimp ceviche? She said, yes. If you've never made it, it's actually quite simple. Shrimp marinated in uh, some lemon juice, lime juice, orange juice, 
and then you put in uh, you, you chop up some jalapenos, some red peppers and stuff, and then you mix it all together, put it on some tor- uh, hard tortillas with some uh, some sauce. It's delicious. Makes it look like you put in a lot of effort. It's nice and light. It's always a hit. So she said, make that. So I went about putting my tunes on the kitchen, getting that all ready. I, I always like my presentation. Everything was presented well, brought it to the table. We're halfway through the meal. I'm looking across at Sid. She says, uh, did, did you cook this shrimp? I said, oh, no, the like, tails were off and everything. It was cooked. It set it on the bag. And then my confidence started to wane in my own. I said, let me, let me go check. So rifle through the garbage. That's what I discovered. We were eating raw shrimp. And I returned with uh, the meme face where the guy's gritting his teeth. I did that in real life. So the table immediately went into Google mode. Will you die from eating? And everyone's like, ah, it's like eating shrimp. Other people are like, oh, it's just got parasites. We like, we could be seriously ill. So I, I was calm. I said, well, it's a group experiment. I checked in for the, the rest of the evening on everyone. How you feeling? Okay. And then I woke up in the morning. We survived. I don't advise eating raw shrimp, but double check that bag when you pull that shrimp out and you start dealing with it. And then Sydney did point out to me, you you know, cooked shrimp is pink and this was great. I said, Sid, I effed up big time. I, uh, I own that. I've never done it before. We'll never do it again, but I own that. Uh, Dan. Yeah. You're not supposed to cook the seafood in a ceviche. I don't think. It's it's the acid. No, no, no. The it's, acid from the juices is supposed to like have the effect of cooking it. It's it's just supposed to be raw uh, seafood. No, I, I went back and looked at the 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 recipe. Clearly states cook the shrimp. Okay, because that's where because any ceviche I've ever had, it's it's supposed to be like raw seafood. That's okay. So in the acid I actually, I'm glad you brought that up. That's what I thought too, because it sits in those juices. I'm like, I'm sure the the lemon and lime and orange juice it killed anything in there because i was going into i gotta i gotta make this right i gotta make sure no one dies in my own mind and that's what i clung to was the citrus juice killing any living organism in there thanks for having my back tim so cook your shrimp that's all i all i gotta say uh, get to our other emails here because uh, it was a, a big week at uh, yeah ya let's talk at gmail dot com. Um, big dog Rob back in the game said just listen to episode one twelve and I somewhat agree with your take on the J season being early. However, I'm getting last year vibes at the plate. Non competitive at bats. Well, that's a buck said. No clear plan on the plate at the plate. That's a buck said. Stagnant on the base paths. I'm trying to be optimistic, and of course the Yankees have been hot out of the gate, which makes everything hurt even more. NBA, NHL playoffs just around the corner. It's a great time to be alive. Your pal, Big Dog Rob. Uh, And one more. Uh, Hey, Dan, listen to the last podcast, and I think that the Fraggle Rock crew is too nice to fight the Smurfs. The raccoons against the Smurfs would be a better battle. They're both a little more cunning and have an edge about them. I would watch the raccoons against the Smurfs because raccoons in real life are evil. I can put a bungee cord with two bricks on top of a garbage and they will get that open. Without a brick falling on their heads. Because I'm like, I'm not trying to be cruel. I don't want it to injure them. But I hope it will scare them. Like fall on their little paw. And they're like, meow, meow. Oh, crap. I guess raccoons don't meow. They'd be like. (laughs) And then run away. But that doesn't. It does not phase them. Those bricks falling from above. 
Because raccoons are part human. If you've ever looked one in the eyes, you felt fear. It is Masters Week. My favorite week of the sports calendar. I've been watching nonstop on my Instagram algorithm visuals from the Masters. Guys practicing. And they say pictures don't do it justice. I was watching uh, Tom Kim chipping onto a green off of what looked like AstroTurf. But that's what the Masters grounds look like. Another one was showing the speed of the greens. Gentleman was dropping a, a ball from above the hole and then from below the hole. The speed in which it traveled above the hole was lightning. While the one below the hole traveled like a foot. And I'm already going against what I said. Someone in the comments when I reposted the video video said, yeah, you ever hear a gravity? No fuckwad. I've played golf. If you are below the hole and you send it the same speed above the hole, it will travel more than two feet on a regular golf course and a regular green. I've played the sport. So get out of here. My uh, moratorium on the comments lasted a day and a half. But I have to find a way in which I don't even see them. Is there a way to do that, Tim? Where I can just, I don't want to shut the comments off. I just don't want to ever see them. Yeah, don't look at them. I know, but it bothers me when it says like uh, 50 replies and I want to get that off of the screen. So I have to click on it to get rid of it saying that and then click back to the regular feed, if that makes any sense. So my eyes will will look. I guess just close my eyes and hit the button and click back. Like how long does it take you to click twice? Just click it and go back. Sorry, speed clicker. We aren't as fast as you. Looking at my master's picks, uh, there's some some good odds on some long shots. Namely, Mike Weir. If you win the master's, you're invited back every year. So Mike Weir will be in the field. Weirzy, plus 200000 So if you put a $5 bet on Mike Weir to win the master's, you'll win $10,000. I want to go through uh, my, other, my other picks. I do have two Canadian, three Canadians in here. Corey Connors, Adam Hadwin, and Nick Taylor. What do we have for these guys? What are their odds to win the Masters? Uh, Corey Connors is plus 6,600. Adam Hadwin is okay. plus 20,000. Nick Taylor is plus 20,000. Who's the favorite in the field to win the Masters currently? No, oh, I don't have that in front of me. Scotty just, Scheffler. No. Oh. Scotty Scheffler. Uh, some other picks I have. I do like Tom Kim. I really enjoyed the segment on him on full swing. So I've got Tom Kim in my picks. Uh, Brooks Kepka, Seth Tigala, and Tiger Woods, who played with Will Zalatoris, who is another one of my picks. And Will said Tiger is hitting the ball the best he's ever seen. What's what's Kepka at? Because Kepka elevates his games at majors, especially since joining Liv, because he has something to prove. Kepka is plus sixteen hundred. Oh, oh boy, one of the favorites. Um, so enjoy the Masters this weekend. It's the the reason I bought my first ever HD TV because I know the screens. They F with them in the stores to make it look more clear. But I was walking by one year during the Masters, and I said, that looks like we're there. And that hatched the idea to buy my first HD TV, which I think I paid like $3,000. That same TV now, you can probably get at Costco for 250 bucks. But it is one of the great sporting events in which HD television shines. 
And while you're watching, I don't want to don't want to let any secrets out of the bag. But when you hear lots of birds chirping, those are piped in. It was revealed. Those are recorded earlier and piped into the broadcast. But the grounds are real. The Masters is a real place. Shot a commercial with uh, Jerome Bettis. Uh, Oh, this is a couple years ago. And we talked about golf. We, in our first five minutes of meeting, we discovered that we both, both love the game. And Jerome and I discussed golf for the next two days. And he told me that he gets to play Augusta at least once a year. And he said, Dan, it doesn't matter if it's my first time, my fifth time, my tenth time. Every single time. He's like a kid the night before, can't sleep. Envisioning that drive into Augusta, walking the grounds. And he says it's the only place he's ever played in which that feeling is there every single time you play it. It is that magical. It is that special. And I said, okay. <laughs> can, I, can I come along one of these times? Jerome at that moment uh, realized he had somewhere else to be. Probably the craft table the craft services table or his dressing room. Cause that question was left unanswered. Jerome Bettis quality human. Uh, let's dive into boomsies newsies, Tim, if you can survive with your infected throat. Uh, okay. Let's start with the Phoenix coyotes, Arizona coyotes. Sorry. Uh, so as everyone knows, they, they've, they're trying to find a new arena. Uh, they're entering into this, uh, bid for an, an auction for a 95 parcel, a 95 acre parcel of land in North Phoenix bordering on Scottsdale. And of course there's political opposition. The mayor of Scottsdale says that he's against the deal that it has to move West away from Scottsdale because they don't have the infrastructure needed to maintain a, a hockey arena. Uh, apparently they don't have the water assets that are needed. So, and he also said he doesn't want a, a project of that magnitude being built by a first time developer, I believe. Yeah. There's a whole lot of red flags on this thing, isn't there? I kind of have to side with the, uh, with the mayor, because if I proposed an arena and said, no, I'm going to build it. I would run from that project. If I was anyone with the ability to approve of it because you want a track record of someone building a project of that size. And the track record for the coyotes is not great, but let's be honest. That team is never leaving there. As long as Gary Bettman is in charge, he will never admit failure. I think if they don't get this parcel of land, if they fail in this bid, it's going to set them back God knows how long that might be that might be it now that that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that the like they'll move that franchise out somewhere else and then they'll probably just go back there with an expansion franchise with a you know a new plan or whatever but how many times have we said about the coyotes nope this is the make it or break it remember uh One night at our old workplace, Tim, there was a big council meeting. We're like, well, if they don't get approved here and we we had to sit and watch this council meeting, we're like, this is this is going to make the coyotes stay or make them leave this council meeting right here. And that was that was 15 years ago. Yeah. Also, that council meeting was hilarious. Um, Yeah, I think it's different this time just because. They're playing in a 3,000 seat arena, a 3,500 seat arena. I think the NHL is kind of like, okay, enough's enough. Like, fix your shit or let's go. That's That should be the Coyotes franchise slogan. It's different this time. I thought you were going to say, fix your shit or let's go. <laughs> uh, they do have a soft spot in my heart because of Connor Ingram. 
a uh, friend of Boomsies, uh, just a great human, a lover of r- roller coaster tycoon, and hopefully he'll join us this summer when his season's over. He has taken the brunt of the workload in net for that team. Want to get uh, his thoughts on what the experience has been like playing in that arena that I didn't know until recently has bench seating in sections like old exhibition stadium benches for fans to sit on, which is when you are a supposedly world-class league is somewhat embarrassing. Just a tad. Uh, Another Southwest uh, site that is looking for uh, uh, an NHL team, you know, probably expansion, but I guess technically the Coyotes could move there. Um, the Utah Jazz owner Ryan Smith took to Twitter and asked what uh, they thought an NHL team in Utah should be called. And they had suggestions for Utah Yeti, Blizzard, Golden Spikes, Saints, of course, Pioneers, Salt Lake City Stags, and Salt Lake City Eagles. Yeti, you can't do that because it's a cooler company. Blizzard, you can't do that. Dairy Queen owns that. You have to you go. You can't trademark a blizzard. With, it's a weather phenomenon. Yeah, you can, Tim. You have to go with Utah Saints. The name of my high school team. We were the St. Peter Saints. And go with the same color scheme. Maroon and gold. The NFL might have something to say about that. Whatever. So, uh, talking about synergy, Mitch Marner uh, has teamed up with Skip the Dishes uh, to uh, promote his candy box. So that it's called Mitch's Mix, and you can order it in the GTA. And the box of candy that you get has 16 of his favorite childhood treats, Kit Kats, uh, the Gummy Hamburger, which I don't know anybody. Disgusting. Disgusting. Blow Pops and Fritos were all among the uh, things that were in it. So, Dan, if the people of uh, Orno, downtown Orno, could order a toolbox of treats from you, what would be in it? I just want to interject when you say Mitch Marner has partnered with Skip the Dishes. Skip the Dishes came to him and said, here is a truck full of money. Um, Pick some things off this list and we'll give you the money. And he said, no problem, partner. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I w- I'm willing to partner with anyone when the payoff is you give me money. Okay, this is an easy one. I'm not going to do 16 items. I'll give you five. Crunchy chocolate bar. Salt and vinegar chips. Preferably uh, kettle style or Lay's. I bought the uh, no name salt and vinegar chips. I was always of the uh, the mind that all salt and vinegar chips are the same. But now having eaten a few bags of no name salt and vinegar chips, I don't think they're real potatoes. I think they're made from potato starch or something cuz there's something fucked up about those. Uh a product you can only find in the states, what you call it chocolate bars. Big league chew, I always like to get a chew on. And some cherry coke. Those are my five items that will be in my uh, Toolsies toolbox. Tim, what do you got? All right. I didn't put a whole lot of thought into this, but uh, so I'll start with the liquid refreshment, which would be Diet Pepsi. Uh, and then I have caramel, Cadbury caramel, the Cadbury mini eggs, Kirkland oh, signature, tr- Kirk- no, Kirkland signature trail mix which is the perfect blend of salty and sweet and uh, Chicago mix. If there were um, food boxes to pick from everyone in the world, that would be the last one I ever selected. Uh, Z money. What do you got? I'm going with uh, the Coke bottle gummies, coffee, crisp, big Turk, sweet chili heat Doritos and cherry Coke as well. Of all the boxes in the world to choose from, that would be the second last one I ever selected. Troy, uh, it's up to you, buddy, to give us some salvation here in an edible box. All right. Troy's treats trunk. 
<clears throat> is going to consist of Cheetos, uh, not the Puffs and not the Flamin' Hot, just regular old crunchy Cheetos, um, a big honey bun, uh, you know, what do they call it? the big Texas honey bun, uh, a Reese's Fast Break Bar, really good, um, a trail mix, uh, like uh, producer Tim said, and then my drink of choice would be Mountain Dew. Oh, God. Wow. The fact that of the three of you, two put trail mix into a candy box tells me there's something wrong. First off, trail mix is not a candy. Secondly, it's got raisins, which should make it punted from the earth. The Kirkland Signature Trail Mix has M&Ms in it. And raisins? And yes. And cashews and peanuts and almonds. It's perfect. I'm surprised you didn't put bridge mix into your uh, candy box, Tim. No, I have. I was traumatized by bridge mix when I was a kid. Oh, because there was raisins in there too. My dad, that's the only thing he would ever get at the candy counter at Sears, which they need to bring back. First off, you'd have to bring back Sears, but at the Sears in Peterborough, Ontario, they had a candy counter, which was like magical to a kid but the only candy my dad would ever get in would come in a little paper bag. They'd scoop it in there was bridge mix. So you'd have to wade through that and try find the caramel ones because there was also candy coated like gummies and candy coated raisins in that mix. It's definitely an old person snack. Cause my 100% as is a big Turk Z money. Yeah. They're delicious. Get out of here. Why don't you just say Turkish delight? Yeesh. <laughs> oh, Tim, can we finish on a mascot story that I had no idea happened? And it's probably the best mascot story <laughs> because of the quotes that I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, gee, Dan, I don't know if I had that on hand. Oh, oh, wait, I do. A The Scott, the soccer mascot or the Queens Park Rangers, uh, who are in the English Football League, second level, fired their mascot, Jude the Cat, after claims he was flirting with females during the game. Uh, a source in the club said that the man was given multiple warnings to stop. Uh, the guy playing Jude the Cat uh, said he was innocent because it's impossible to flirt with female fans because no one can hear him talk when he's wearing the costume. And also, but, but it's it's all physical. So yeah. maybe yes, he's not talking to these female fans, but it's more in your face because he's got to he's got to use his body and his arms. So that means his flirting was very visible. It was not audible. It was very visible. Uh, they also said that he couldn't get female fans phone numbers because it's impossible since he doesn't have pockets to store the numbers in the costume. So if he was asking for their phone numbers, which this alleges he was having to do it through hand signals. So he would be in his mascot outfit saying like pointing to their phone or pointing to a pretend phone. And either this guy was being handed a piece of paper with their numbers or he has a really good memory and if you are one of these women who's given their phone number to a mascot you don't know what's inside there except the knowledge that it's a stinky human a stinky sweaty possibly horny human You don't even know if it's a, a man or a woman. Really? Yeah. I guess, it, well, maybe it's the air of mystery <laughs> that's driving these women wild at these soccer games. The air of something. Well, I feel bad for uh, old uh, Jude the cat. And there's pictures of him um, with his arms around a woman. And uh, yeah, it looks like he should be fired. Just from that picture alone. Jude is all in this girl's personal space. But judging by the picture, she is not a, adverse to it. 
And it's and you're probably thinking, okay, maybe it's like a sexy cat. There's nothing sexy about this uh, this Jude the cat. It kind of looks like a cat had sex with a rat and had a baby, and then they named it Jude the cat. It looks like a cat costume you would have got at Value Village. Correct. Hmm. Well, I'm glad we got to put that in the Boomsies universe because we do like all mascot-related uh, topics. Uh, Tim, anything else to add? Uh, I'd just like to point out something for our YouTube viewers. Oh, okay. There's a picture of you behind you there, and I've been looking at it this whole time trying to figure out what it reminds me of, and it's definitely a picture of you as Fallout Boy from the, the game Fallout. Just throwing that out there. The picture behind me, I envision that as my Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire moment, which I'm dangling down. Kissing yourself? For a kiss. Uh, the backstory on that, in uh, the last commercial we shot for Bet Rivers in a responsible gaming commercial, uh, the, the premise was, take time out to spend time with people you love. And I spend all day hanging out with myself. So I play chess at one point. Um, I do some beekeeping. <laughs> this is a weird one. We ride a bike. Again, this is all with myself. Uh, another gentleman played my stunt double. And they, uh, they did a great job editing and shooting. And another one, we were uh, on the shores of Lake Ontario painting portraits of ourselves, which is me painting a picture of me. And... The artists, they didn't know which direction they wanted to go in. They didn't know if they wanted to be really good pictures or really bad. So she did up four. Uh, this being one of the really bad ones. And then they progressively got uh, better or whatever order you're doing. And they progressively got worse. And the one that is hanging upside down behind me is one of the better ones. So at the end of the day... Everyone's packing up their stuff. I'm thanking the crew for their time. And it looks like she's going to just throw these in the trash. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Can I take those home? She said, of course. And I said, can you sign them too? So I have four uh, signed photos of myself that are hand drawn. And uh, don't know what to do with them yet. So we just threw them in the studio. So that's the backstory on um, portraits of myself that... Uh, are good and bad. Kind of like days we have. We have good and bad days. But uh, we come out smiling at the end, right? Although I'm not smiling in these pictures. Except the really bad one. I digress. Uh, have a great week. Have a great Masters week. Enjoy it. Just to tune into the, the spectacle that is one of the greatest in golf. Make sure you hug someone. And make sure you're nice doesn't cost you anything welcome to boomsies with dan o'toozy live from orno in the heart of ontario oh baby boomsies